And I want to introduce now, uh, we're going to get uh, Hassani and Daniel on board. And I want everybody to get your notepads because I'm sure they're going to have some wisdom to drop on us. So uh, I want to welcome Hassani and Daniel. Are you there? Reveal yourselves. <laughs> Reveal yourselves, guys. Hey, you're here. <laughs> Daniel, I'm only seeing kind of half of your face. You need to, you need to scoot over a little bit. Yes, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Hey, there we go. We have the couple. Yeah. We have the couple who are officially running Couples Academy. And uh, we love you guys. We appreciate all that you're doing uh, for people's lives to help them out, to be a blessing, to try and uh, lead them in the right direction in terms of wisdom and information, inspiration, revelation, for transformation, helping people push forward with their relationships and their marriages. And what a crazy, crazy time we are having on planet Earth right now. Uh, we're so used to seeing craziness in some part of the world, but not in the entire world. And I think that's what makes this a completely different experience for everybody is the fact that everybody's trying to navigate this. We're used to watching stuff like this happen on TV or on a movie or while we're, I guess, while we're fortunate and blessed enough to be ensconced in, in the luxurious atmospheres of the Western world, uh, we're realizing now that stuff that we used to watch on the news can affect us too because we are all human. Yes. We're all God's creation. We're all human. And uh, this kind of crazy stuff can affect anybody. So, guys, I want to welcome you. And uh, I know you guys are in quarantine as well. Tell us. Tell, tell us what that's been like. Give me, give me a 30-second word or 30-second statement concerning quarantine in, in Atlanta, uh, in surreal. the States. Surreal. I think I, you, you hit it. 9-11 for us felt like a yeah. movie. Like when that right. second plane hit the tower, we were looking at each yeah. other like, is this actually happening? Is this real? And so it's the same yeah. type of feeling as we see the entire globe go through a shared experience. There's so many things that divide yeah. us, like geography and language and culture and faith. Right. But the one thing that has united us is this global pandemic. Absolutely. And it feels mm -hmm. like a movie. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like, you know, it hit us, it, it, it took us by storm. One minute we're enjoying life and going, coming and going. And the next minute we're hiding out in our houses and, you know, storing up rice for a year, you know? So it's <laughs> quite shocking. You yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. Rice and pasta is officially the will of God right now. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> we are finding all kinds of new recipes and inventions in terms of our, um, our, uh, our uh, culinary skills, trying to extend those so that we can be a blessing to our own stomachs. So oh, this is a wonderful time to uh, to really, you know, live life, uh, experience life. We've gone back really to, I guess, the basics, if the truth be told. And sometimes I think there's some some uh, blessing in that. Yeah. And I want I'm going to be talking hopefully about more about that uh, as we go along uh, in the, these weeks to come. However, tonight, tonight anyway, is about what a lot of people are struggling with. Uh, I've talked to people who are being real with me and saying they never knew they could carry this level of frustration for somebody they, they claim to love. <laughs> um, yeah. Number one, there's the pressure of the, the, uh, the proximity because I believe relationships are spatial. I believe relationships are spatial and I think you have different couples, different uh, people have their different spaces and at the moment spaces are being invaded there is a space invasion taking on, taking place. Then on top of that, we've got the kids and the kids are off school because the schools are closing down uh, in some capacity, at least uh, in most places. And um, that is added pressure. Now, here's what I want to say as we open up. Um, what blew my mind, I'm a nerd. I like reading. I like um, research. And what I found out is that uh, this is at least anecdotal. I've yet to get it affirmed, confirmed in terms of an academic um, or a more concretized uh, confirmation. But the fact is, is that they told us in Wuhan, in China, China and in the province and in the areas where they had to shut down immediately because of this virus, uh, the moment, watch this now, the moment the shutdown uh, was kind of relaxed and people were able to come out, they said they ha there has been a spike. I read this in the New Yorker. I read it in about seven or uh, six or seven different publications. The moment the quarantine was over in China and they were allowed to come out of their homes and start getting kind of back to more regularity, the divorce rate spiked. So it's like the moment everybody came out of quarantine, the first thing they were looking for was a lawyer 
to yeah. try and get the heck, so to speak, out of a relationship. Uh, and I, I guess there's got to be some corroboration between the spike. That's why I said it's anecdotal. It's not necessarily academic yet. But there has to be a corroboration or a collaboration or a connection or some kind of link uh, between the fact that people have been in quarantine and now the moment the moment quarantine's over, there's this spike in divorce rates. And we want to make sure that does not happen. <laughs> we want to make so we're calling you guys. You're the paramedics, guys. <laughs> this is your thing. We're calling you guys to make sure that this does not happen. There is no spike, at least not a spike in the kingdom couples. Yeah. In a... Uh, people who are Christ followers. So this kind of blew my mind and made me realize, hey, listen, we need to jump on this right now and try and give some ideas, uh, some kind of concepts, ideas, some uh, wisdom in terms of how people can navigate it. So there's two topics tonight we want to discuss. The first topic is uh, managing your marriage in the madness. And when we say the madness, we're talking about the madness of what we're seeing going on and the pressure of being in quarantine and isolation together. And also we want to talk about... Um, uh, uh, really parenting through the pandemic. My wife right now, she'd be joining us if she could, but of course she's dealing with my daughter and uh, they're doing what they can do in terms of the whole education and classes. And so we're having to prioritize. Otherwise she'd have been on this live with me right now. But listen, so let's open up. We're talking about uh, managing your marriage in the madness. I've heard now, um, you know, we keep it real on these Facebook lives. I've the, One of the craziest statements I've heard already is somebody said they did not know they, they did not know that COVID makes you frigid. They did not know. They did not know that. I was like, that's a, that's a whole rhyme by itself. They're saying that they're not even in, she's not in the mood. I talked to a guy, he said he's Gino. He's in the bed with his wife and she's turning away from him. And it's probably because of issues and beef and drama they had earlier in the day. There's all kinds of stuff going on. So um, talk to us about it. Come on, give us some wisdom. Can I just chime in on what you just said, Mike? Because... One thing that I keep hearing is people say, I didn't know my spouse was so ugly or my wife was so jacked up. We can't go to the nail salon. <laughs> we can't go to the nail salon. We can't get our weaves done. We can't do anything. We're over here looking <laughs> a hot mess. We're totally exposed. But I want everybody to know we're in the same boat. Like everybody's life just blew up. One of the first right. things that we encountered was our kids got pulled out of school. That was the first thing that, that happened in the county that we lived in. And we weren't ready for any of that. We didn't have schedules right. or anything prepared. We didn't have all the food. We didn't know that we were going to be cooking three times a day. Now, who's doing that? We're all working. That's I'm true. not cooking and feeding and serving and cleaning. So we're all in the same boat. And couples are forced to deal with each other where they never had to for, for years right. because they're exactly. getting morning they're going to work they don't see each other until after five right and so we've got our routines of avoidance set in stone and now boom yeah. we're face to face with no choice that's right it's yeah. like the government around the world has shut people down right self yeah. to protect them from the crisis that's happening outside of their homes but they didn't realize that it's creating crisis within the homes because right. as Danielle said, we live our lives by distraction. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gone for eight, 10 hours a day and don't have to deal with you. And then I can, what, once I come home, maybe have a couple words and go into my side of the house. And now every day I'm forced to be with you 24 hours a day. All of these issues are, are surfacing yeah. to the top Boiling and, over. and it's creating a huge, huge, huge issue. It is. Well, I mean, the fact is everybody's human, no matter even those of us who are Christ followers, we are human beings also. And the fact is there are tendencies for us to not give each other the grace and the space to be able to dwell together. And that goes back to the whole thing where a lot of people are trying to define the difference between the soulmate and the cellmate. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for real, for real right now, I think a lot of people... Uh, if they're going to keep it 100% real, are feeling like they're with a cellmate rather than a soulmate. So give us your top three, uh, or I, maybe five, I might extend it to five, top five tips for how to manage the atmosphere before any drama to prevent. Because I believe in, here's the thing, me, I believe in vaccination more than just medication. Medication tries to address the issue after there's drama, after there's now arguments, after there's now beef. But vaccination is things you put in place. This is the metaphor I use for things you put in place before stuff comes along or to stop stuff coming along and harming the marriage. So from a vaccination perspective, give us your top five tips 
for how to deal with each other in that that tight social space so that the soulmate does not become a cellmate. Yeah. I think one of the first things you have to do with your partner is have a, a clear discussion of how we are going to repurpose our home, right? Because right. it seems as though the kitchen was once a place where we would go to eat, but now it's a place where I have to do homework and my laptop's there and she's working and there's phone calls and you're Noise. too loud. Listen, I'm on a call with a client. Can yes. you please give me your switch? Everything becomes an issue, right? Yeah. So Reevaluating how you use that space. Some of us are fortunate enough to have large homes and some of us are really in tight quarters, right? And so we have to multitask and use the things in different ways and it becomes a stress, just a normal yeah, yeah. So having that conversation, I think is critically important. Mm -hmm. uh, creating a timeline, like for instance, if I work an eight hour shift and you work an eight hour, sh hour shift and we have to get work done, but yet we have our kids, how do we readjust our clock in order to accommodate each other so that we don't wind up fighting and yeah. fussing over things that have to take place yeah. in order for us to continue to thrive. Yeah. Like some right. people are losing their jobs, but a lot of people have to function effectively from their same home yeah. with their current yeah. job. And, and so that can cause problems and issues with a couple. Yeah, I think, I think also it needs to be said that, I mean, like the rest of us, it just hit us. So we're still trying to find our groove, right? We're yeah, still trying yeah. to figure out what works for us. And we haven't mastered it yet. I mean, every day I think about running away from home and never coming back. But it <laughs> speaks to me and says, I will not put up on you more than you can bear. And I just yes. read the scripture and keep moving yeah. forward because these kids will drive you mad. And then, and then, you know, we have to consider them. I mean, they are going through something. They are frustrated. I think about the seniors here. We have, when you're in the 12th grade, you're a senior. That's before you go to high uh, college. These right. kids, their whole senior year, their last year in high school is being shut down. No graduation, nothing that they expected. They worked all these years for, you know, they're in yeah. the middle of cheerleading. They're in the middle of sports and things like that. And they've been snatched away from it. And they're trying to juggle all this. So to your point, Pastor Mike, just being empathetic and being, yeah. giving each other the grace that is yeah. necessary for you to function every day. Cause we are all going through something. There's a yeah. lot of things I'm hearing people do. They're reading books. Like, when's the last time you had the time to get yeah. sit down and read a book with your family? How about the word? When's that happening? So there's a yeah. lot we can be doing and looking yeah. at the bright side. I think in every wretched situation, there's an opportunity for us to see the silver lining and take advantage of something. And there's a lot of beautiful things happening in the middle of this quarantine. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, I, I want everybody who's watching this right now, if it's being a blessing to you, if you can, please share it. Make sure you share, like, if you're enjoying already what Danielle and Hassani are saying, then I want you to hit a whole load of loves, likes, let me see those come up, and please, keyword, share. We were supposed to go live on the other page, but we ended up going live on this page because all kinds of technology is crazy right now. Uh, I was mentioning to the group who came on earlier, the fact that um, I'm, I'm having friends from across the world telling me how frustrated they are. They're trying their best to serve their faith communities, their churches, having creative meetings, having admin meetings and stuff, trying to be a blessing. Just like us over here, I've been in more meetings in 24 hours than I could ever imagine. Yeah. And uh, so I'll share it. Make sure everybody knows we're on this page. Text somebody as well, guys. Text somebody as well and let them know there's a great discussion taking place over here on Mike White London page, okay? Now, by the way, guys, if you, t if you have any questions, if you have any questions, if I, if I can, I'll read a few questions out if you want to type any questions also in the comments box. In a, in a, just in a little while, I'll ask those questions to uh, Danielle and Hassani so that we can maybe answer any questions you may have. We'll do just a few. We can't do everybody, but we'll do a few. But for now, I want to carry on with this issue of the fact that we want to hear these, these wisdoms to help people vaccinate, keyword vaccinate. So, okay, so you've got a couple, you've got a couple, and uh, they're stuck in the house together. Both of them are working because nowadays, this isn't like the 1950s, where it's just the dude who's working uh, out and the woman is working at home taking care of the family and the kids most people it's a dual job it's a dual 
uh, role and responsibility to bring finances in because of the pressures that the Western world is under in terms of trying to pay bills, pay by, uh, pay a mortgage, whatever else is going on. So the both of them come in, the both of them are trying to work from home. How do they manage that, that, that spatial issue of working from home? Then what, what tips can you give them to make sure that they're able to create an atmosphere of peace after work and desire for one another after work? Because you know, when you've been cooped up with anybody, unless it's Jesus, okay? <laughs> <laughs> have you been cooped up all day with anybody after all you're like i'm you know eh, uh, you know i'm not sure if i want to have a conversation so so talk talk to us about those kind of aspects please well i think you hit it when you first started you said you believe relationships are spatial right so even though you're in close proximity there needs to be time for you to spend time alone with yourself we talked about yeah. how we are all the lowest common denominator of every relationship we are in so yeah. yes i can't lose my sense of self my self-identity i can't lose my voice i can't lose what makes me who i am and a lot of times you take on the identity of your partner or of your family and you've lost yourself yeah. and so in this time daniel just mentioned this taking the time to have your own peace of mind reading a book like for instance I like to play pool. So I'll go down to the basement and I'll just play pool. And that's my way of de-stressing. Yeah. That's my way of taking yeah. a break from all the craziness. So have and I leave you alone in there. Yeah. I don't yeah. bother you. That's your space. And I'm good with that. Yeah. And we all need. And so it's about having a conversation. You're talking about a site. Could I interject there real quick? Because you said something there, Daniel, which was intriguing, connected to what Hassani was saying. So you're saying it's important to us if, you, if you've got the room. I mean, you know, some couples may be in one studio apartment, who knows, but to assign each other independent spaces and then have a neutral space that you come together in. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Abs you said it so much more articulate than I did, but that's exactly what it is. That's good, so if you're in close proximity, okay, for the next hour, babe, you go in there, you enjoy yourself, do what you have to do, be alone, whether you're connecting with family. Because what we found out, the power of social media and technology allows us to now connect with other family members and friends yeah. we haven't spoken to in a long time, and she should have her time to do that. Yeah. Likewise, well, on that point, on that point, listen, and I want you to remember what you're going to say next, but I wanted to throw this in because I'll tell you what else, that as a pastor, you know, Dealing with people, I'm a peopleologist, so to speak, if I could coin a phrase, a plumber deals with pipes, an electrician deals with wires, I deal with people. And what I found in talking to people, guys, here it is, get ready. This is what's interesting. I found out talking to people just in these last couple of days of quarantine, because we've only been on real tight lock. Uh, London's only been on tight lockdown, or United Kingdom, I should say, in the last really 48 hours. And what's fascinating to me is this. Uh, having conversations with people who are realizing, wait for it, wait for it, they've been in a long distance relationship with the person they live with. The whole time. Mm. Right. Yes. They discover they've been in a long distance relationship with the very person they've lived with. Mm -hmm. And and now finding things out about the person they did not realize before. And so there's an aspect to this. The reason I bring this up, and if, if this makes sense to anybody, I'm not saying you're going through this, but if this is making sense to anybody, I want you to hit likes, hit some likes, and also, please remember, guys, share. And the reason I keep saying share is not, it's not to do with ego. It's to do with the fact that we were supposed to be on the other platform. And I want to make sure everybody who had booked time to come onto this knows where we're at. Anyway, the reason I bring up what I brought up about the fact that people seem to be uh, realizing they've been in a long-distance relationship with the very person they live with is because many people are discovering their spouse for the first time. It's almost like they've moved in with somebody new. How do they navigate that? What a, that great opportunity. what a great opportunity. I mean, the right. next thing I was going to say was, this is the opportunity to build, break down those walls that have been between us all this time. Because we've been able to use <coughs> work and all these other responsibilities as our scapegoat, we have nowhere yeah. to go but to each other. Nowhere to go. Time there is to no work. escape. That's it. That's it. There is no escape. So what Hassan and I have been doing, because we have four, one, two, three, four children here to deal with. After they've gone off to bed, we have set aside time for ourselves because we've been working 24 hours mm -hmm. a day, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, literally, as soon as we wake up, we start working, whether it's housework or dealing with the kids, homework, schoolwork, and then our own work. And so we have set that time aside because we have been getting frustrated with each other as well, because it's frustrating. 
to have to deal with each other under these new parameters and we have not established rules or guidelines for this. So this is the opportunity to get with our spouses and say, you know what, let's discover something new together. Let's begin to explore something new together. We have no choice. That's right. And all we have is each other. So this whole long distance concept, wow, mm -hmm. I love the way that's been coined. But what it speaks to is, what? What happened? Oh, I don't know what just happened. Are we still, Are we still live? Long? I yeah, well, I'm still, I, I can still see you. Can you still see me? Uh, well, listen, let's, keep, let's just keep going. Um, what, what ha we just had something. Oh, let, me ask, let me ask my team. We're good. Sorry yeah. about that, guys. You can still see it if you can still see us. Sasani and Daniel weren't sure if we lost us. Team, let pa help Pastor. You know, Pastor don't know what he's doing. Yeah, we're, we're still live. We're still live. Okay, we're still live. Okay, guys, you can still see us. If you can still see us. Hit some likes or something so we know. That was weird. We're good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. okay. But okay. Yeah. The, the teams come back. They said we're good. We can keep going. We're good. Okay. We're on live. Go. So we are in close physical proximity when we come home. But the right. long distance relationship speaks to the fact that we're emotionally disconnected. Yeah. And we are as far as the East is from the West. And so now right. being forced to be with each other all day long, we have to look at each other. You learn things about your partner that you never knew before yeah. because you're seeing right. them all day. And so I often say, we often say that there's a gift in every yeah. practice if you take yeah. advantage of it. And so- yeah, yeah. To your point, taking out a book and learning each other all over, all over again. We say that one of the principles that we, we teach and we live by is become a student of your spouse. Get your PhD right. and your partner. Take the time right. to relearn them all over again. What are your likes? What are your dislikes? What turns you on? What turns you off? What are your interests? What are your passions? What's your drive? What's your motivation? There's a number of questions that you can engage in to rediscover. Because guess what? We become different people. We're not the same people we were when we said I do. We are now years uh, removed from, what, from our wedding day. And so there's a yeah. new way of interacting and communicating and dealing with each other that you yeah. can learn in this particular process. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you a question, and I want two perspectives. I want the female perspective and the male perspective. Now, this is going to be quite, sh uh, some might say it's quite shallow. Some might, might uh, use a, a negative statement saying that it's a typical thing for a male to ask. But I did have a discussion with two men today, today, very much today. And both of them were, they, they said it in a jovial way, but I think the statements on from at least one of the guys was coming from a deeper place, okay? And this is the issue of should a couple who are in quarantine try and make a visual effort for each other? One, one guy said that he had a discussion with his wife about it. And she said, no, you should be used to me like this. It doesn't matter what I look like. Another guy said that his wife, said, yeah, I'm going to, you know, because I realize, you know, I, I, we all both need to make effort for each other. She's good with that. You know, uh, some guys have only married this woman and they're used to her with her hair always done. She's got a weave on till it looks unbeweavable. And she's always looking on fleek and on point. You know, and now she's, he's got to deal with her not necessarily looking as uh, visually, um, uh, uh, her visual pulchritude is not potent. Uh, let's say, as it normally is, should she be making an effort for him and should he be making an effort for her or should he just be walking around all day in his, in his same clothes not taking care of himself? I think the, I think the answer is obvious. However, I'd like to hear how you both feel from different perspectives, female and male. See how he points at me? Shame on him. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, I think we should try to always be our best. I think most of yeah. the time, people get up in the morning and get themselves together because they don't want to look at themselves looking a hot mess either. Truly. Yeah, right? Right. And so we, we yeah, hope, that, well, we yeah. hope, right? So <laughs> yeah, I think we should, I think if it's an issue for your spouse, how you're looking and, and, you know, do your best. You can't go to the salon and get your hair braided, but you can maybe do something yourself. A couple of my friends, we are on the zooms together. We're painting nails together. We're figuring out ways to make it happen. So, if it's an issue in your in your relationship, I say you got to do something about it. I think because we don't know how long this is going to be. This is very true. I think to have a resistance to it is the real problem. Like, why would there be a resistance to one? Well, one guy saying that his wife was saying to him that you know, well, it doesn't. Why do I have to dress? You know, I'm working. I'm at home. Why should I dress up for you? 
you know, where you should be used to me the way I'm looking right now. Why do I need to, and why, do, in other words, why does she need to doll herself up, so to speak? Let's I'm not sure if you expect her to doll herself <coughs> up, but he said that, uh, you know, not just being, yeah. I think, I think that was his, his context. You know? yeah, but Danielle just hit it on the head. See, we're dealing with this topic, but it speaks to a deeper issue. That's right. That leads to this whole lackadaisical approach or an unwillingness to want to dress up for their partner. Maybe there's some other yeah. issues that are unresolved that has led to that. Because who have they been dressing up for before that? And, and think about it. You go to work every uh, single day. You dress up. Right. You good. You put on your best because you're going out in public. But I think... You get comfortable with your spouse. You're like, they know me. They love me. It's no big deal. And you're very yeah. much more lax. So I think if you have a conversation, both of you can just be more intentional. And maybe, maybe this, if not the whole day, because I got to work, I'm dealing with the kids. Maybe when everybody goes away, there's nothing wrong with having inside the house dates. Like we can't yeah. really go outside. We can't go to the movies. We can't go to a concert. We can't go to a play. We can't go anywhere to dress up to look good for each other. But why not create room, space, and environments and an atmosphere in our household where we're romantic for each other, we're attractive to each other. So if not the whole day, let's say when the kids go away, let's go in our quarters, let's get dressed up, and then let's engage. I mean, so I think it's just about being open. Yeah. And if you're Create open, as a couple, try something. Yeah, you're going to have to do something different. Please. You just have to. Because this quarantine is going to feel twice as long if you're looking at somebody that looked like a tree stump. A tree stump, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I've ever heard that phrase. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so so basically, what you're what to summarize that particular point, then there should be there should be a desire to want to look good for each other at yeah. some point. You can't just stay in the same old, the same stuff you went to bed in. You're wearing the entire day <laughs> for the next two days and crazy stuff like that. Come on, now yeah. we've all been guilty of that since quarantine. Okay, but let's just <laughs> not make it. Let's not make it routine. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Like we right. listen. Listen. One of the top ten emotional needs of men and women is an attractive yeah. spouse. Yeah. And, and physical attraction is one of the things that initiates a relationship. Well, you gotta maintain it. You can't say, well, we, we together now, so bump that. That's not important anymore. It's even more important. Yeah. So you got them, now you gotta keep them by making sure that you take care of yourself and you, and you become your best self. Yeah. Right. Well, let me, let me move to another topic connected to attraction, which is sex. Um, the fact is, over here, we've got a large, especially, um, I guess, I guess certain areas, certain boroughs even more than others. But right now, as I'm sure it's happening in the States, there's a lot of, there's two wars. I mean, we, I, the way I've looked at this thing going on is there's two wars. There's the war on the virus, and then there's also a war on fear. And uh, those who are fighting the war on the virus are our front line. We have, of course, over here, I know you guys don't have it there, but we are so, so, so blessed to have a national health service over here, which we 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 try and protect and we love it. We uh, if, if any politician messes with it, he knows that's the end of him because we protect it, we love it. They're an amazing bunch of people and they're the ones fighting the virus. But you know, we've got a large, I, I, I know even within our church, we've got a large demographic of people who work in the NHS in some capacity. And um, the fact is, you know, by the time they've, they've been worn out, and I'm not just dealing with NHS workers, by the way, guys, this doesn't just apply to NHS workers. I'm just using them as an example. By the time you get home and you're tired after trying to take care of all these people who are uh, infected and affected by this virus situation, you know, where do you get the energy from to really be intimate? And then it, how do you stop the intimacy drying up, disappearing, uh, vanishing over the next what could possibly be three months? Yeah. Well, I think that sex is the second step. The first step is intimacy. And I think many people oh. mean intimacy and sex synonymous in their <laughs> not. Like if, there's, if, there's, if there is no into me see, then sex yeah. rise up. Yes. Thank you for saying, I was going to wait because if he had tried to pass the ball to me, I was going to turn it back around because... <laughs> Let's be honest, okay? The brunt of the work is on the wives right now. It just is it's for I'm most I'm cases. Pack it. I'm pack it. I'm pack it, Danielle. I'm for most, for most, okay? That's not everybody because there's always an exception. 
But for the most part, it's us who have had to really step it up in a major way, especially if we're still working from home. We are now teachers. We are now the lunch staff at the school. We're the cleanup. We're the mop up. We're the anti-infected up because everybody's going crazy, mopping, wiping, swiping, and cleaning to get the virus out of the house as best as we can. We are going crazy. And so the other day, I was looking crazy. <laughs> crazy, okay? And Hassani was like, what is going on with you? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I was, I was literally having an out-of-body experience. And he didn't even realize that he needed <laughs> to step up in a big way for me. Because I was running myself raggedy and I didn't even yeah. know how to distribute the work. I'm like, I got to do this, that, the third, the fourth, the fifth. And so when I explained this to him, Hassani was ready to step up to do the best he can. He even made some terrible, mis p sp p terrible spaghetti. Now, it was terrible. It was terrible, y'all. <laughs> How do you make bad spaghetti? You just it was get terrible, the Pastor Mike. It was terrible. Water. I don't get that, bro. Come on. Come on, bro. You got to do better than that. But I didn't care, and neither did the kids, because it was done. And so let's, let, we cannot ignore the fact that there's so many responsibilities that we're faced with. When it comes yeah. to intimacy, he did. He looked into me to see I needed right. some help. Otherwise, it was nothing going to happen in the bed that night, because yeah. it's just too exhausting. So we have to make room for each other, y'all. Let's step, step up. Everybody needs to step up and help out. And yeah. to that point, because I was yeah. looking to see that, and because we had a conversation about how she felt overwhelmed and how I needed to help more with the kids and with the school and stuff yes. like that. Because, you know, I'm working. I got clients. I'm, I'm, I'm working on yeah. projects. I got we training. We are sessions. working. Wait a minute. I'm talking about me. Okay. <laughs> I'm working. See this? All right. See this? I'm working. Yeah. And so, but, but I can't forget that there are all these other things happening in the household. Yeah. So I've got to play my part. And so by me participating and being a partner to her in some of those things, the, the sex, which was step two, did happen. And so yes. you just have to be mindful. You have to Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know what? And it, and it comes from a good Thank place. You for sharing. Thank you for sharing that with us, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, and we like to keep it real, right? But yeah, at yeah, the end yeah, of the day, real. it needs to come from a, a good place. It can't come from a forced place. We're already yeah. under too much pressure to be dealing with duty sex. So let's <laughs> do something so that we don't have to feel like it's a duty and we actually want to give ourselves to each other because we feel taken care of. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Love, love that. I love the transparency. And I think I think just this conversation, just the transparency is going to be giving many couples relief in terms of thinking, are they are they going to end it by the end of this, uh, this whole uh, quarantine thing? Uh, have I married the wrong person? Is this Lucifer's sister? Is this the devil's uh, cousin? You know, people are people are freaking out. And, uh, you know, we're, this is in the Western world, we're so good at putting on a, a face and a uh, pretense and a filter in terms of trying to make ourselves look phenomenal. And we're all humans trying to make it through this thing and trying to do the best to maintain and stay connected with each other as married couples. Uh, one of the fascinating things as well is that you guys have always been very transparent about the fact that there is going to be pressure, there's going to be disagreements, there's going to be arguments. What do you do if there is a real kicking off? What's the best thing you guys can recommend people do? Kicking off is a, U a European colloquialism. It's a UK colloquialism. Kicking off as in fighting. Not necessarily physically, but having a conflict. And yeah. there's an issue. You have beef. You have drama. Okay? And uh, what's, what, what's the best thing people can do to try and bring a resolution if now drama does happen? Because we've talked about vaccination to try and prevent drama. Now, what happens if drama happens? What's the best thing we can do to really bring medication to that situation number one pause stop see because once it gets emotional and you're emotionally infused and you're engaged in a conversation no resolution comes out of that because emotions yeah. are not logical they don't make sense so you can't solve or resolve any problem when you are drenched soaked and saturated in emotions so sometimes you just have to take a break come back in an hour, come back later in the day yeah. when your emotions have subsided to then engage and deal with it. That's number one. That's number one. Number two, you have to have a lifeline. Listen, I've yeah. gotten so many calls in the last few days of couples who are in legitimate crisis. Yes. 
ready to yeah, do yeah, yeah. everything. Yeah. So you've got to because, because of the quarantine. It's eight oh, yeah. 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 Directly related. Yeah. Perfect example. Just today, uh, I have a client who's a firefighter. He's on yeah. the front lines. He was yeah. exposed to the coronavirus. So the wow. chief had him and eight other people stay in a hotel overnight, don't go home, don't expose your spouse and your children, but because there were infidelity issues in the past, now she's triggered. What do you mean you're going to a hotel? With who? Where? Right. Who are you with? Right. What's happening? And so literally, literally, I'm getting text messages while we're engaged that yeah. they're right. about to call it quits and they need help just to manage through all of these challenges. And so the point is, mm -hmm. if they had not had a lifeline, Couples Academy, yeah. if you all don't have a lifeline, whether it be your pastor or a, a, a marriage mentor or whomever, then, then it can cause more problems than it needs to. So you got to pause. You have to have a lifeline, somebody that you can go to for guidance. And we always talk about the techniques like the marriage negotiation worksheet. These are tools that we've given people that you've got to use. I think sometimes we outsmart the very tools that we've been given and figure we don't need that. We can figure it out on our own. But you're not in a position where you can do that. And so you've got yeah. to have a community. Listen, last point. We say this all the time. It takes a village to raise a child, right? Well, likewise, yeah. it takes a community to keep a marriage intact. Mm -hmm. And if you're not connected right. to a community that can support you when you're going through, then it's just going to go from bad to worse. Love it. Love it. Love the wisdom. Love it. Great. This is great. Uh, those of you who don't know Hassani and Danielle, you need to check out couplesacademy.org. Couplesacademy.org. Danielle and Hassani, in my opinion, are some of the world's greatest uh, marriage, I, I call them marriage consultants. They uh, provide, so to speak, an ambulance service. It's almost like an ER paramedic. Uh, we over here call it A and E for marriages that are in trouble. They tend to deal a lot with celebrity couples and and uh, people who can fly them in. They fly around the world to come and provide triage and rescue and healing uh, to and treatment and emergency surgery, so to speak, on marriages. And so that's why we've got them on here today or tonight, I should say, in the UK. I don't know what time you're watching it, wherever you are around the world. But um, they joined me, Pastor Mike White, and that's what you're watching here. Please share this. Uh, don't just be a voyeur. Don't just be somebody who watches stealthily and uh, takes all the nuggets down and gets blessed, but don't be a blessing. Please share it with somebody else. Uh, just share, hit the share button on your page. If this is blessing, you guys, hit some likes. I want to see some likes or loves or whatever, just so that I know that this is being a blessing to you. It's helpful. Well, we're all housebound and feeling like we may need deliverance because once you're bound, you need to be delivered. Uh, uh, this is supposed to be really helping people navigate their way through and realize that you're not stir crazy. These are uh, natural times or natural things that we're experiencing in these times concerning pressure. All right. Um, I want to just do a quick advert as well. Friday morning for all of us who are Christ followers, all of you are members of the tab. Remember, Friday morning, it's not going to be Thursday morning now, Friday morning, Friday morning, I want everybody on the prayer call at 6.30. We had an amazing time, amazing, powerful time on Tuesday morning. And I want to thank my literally hundreds of you who dialed in. I want to apologize to those of you who I heard couldn't get through. We hit the maximum capacity on Tuesday morning, but we've now spoken to the organization who runs our lines and we've extended the capacity so more people can come onto the prayer line on Friday morning, 6.30 a.m. Friday morning, 6.30 a.m. All right, guys, love you all. I'm trying to do my best. I've been over here, Hassani and Daniel. I'm trying to pass the people through this. I want to be the leader that... Um, people need uh we want to provide the leadership my, my pastoral care team have been amazing we've got a hotline that people can call if they're lonely um and genuinely alone and have nobody to interact with we're trying to really fight as i said while the national health service professionals are fighting the virus we're trying to fight the other war which is the war of fear yeah. and remove that from people there are lonely people some of the calls i got uh when i had our hotline uh, i was dealing with it directly on sunday and uh, some of the calls that I received, people were carrying fear and people were lonely. And then it started making me think about people who are lonely and also having to manage their fears and also manage their children's fears, those yeah. people who have kids. So let's switch topics now from marriage. We talked about managing the marriage and the madness. And let's talk about kids. And then I'm going to take a few questions. So we're going to spend a few minutes um, talking about the parenting through the pan pandemic. 
and then we're going to take a few questions. If you write your questions down, I can see the questions. I don't know. Can you guys see them as well? You guys can't see them, or you can't um, see them. Yeah, we can. We can. Yeah. yeah, you can see them. So we'll look at some questions and we'll answer a few uh, just in a minute. Once I say go with the questions, you write your questions down. So have them ready. Maybe write them down, cut, paste, so they're in your thumb, so to speak, and then you can just paste it in when it's time for the questions. But right now, I want us to talk about parenting through the pandemic. Yeah. Give us, you guys have got four kids. What's your, yeah. your kid's name? Oh, Paris, uh, Madison, Savannah, Savannah and Sydney. Sydney. Yeah. We've got, we've got. Paris, now, 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 Paris and Sydney, is, is there a reason? Because, you know, there's going to be some kids after, these, after this issue called quarantine. <laughs> I said that. I said, I guarantee you, there's going to be children in quarantine. Go, quar go yeah. quarantine. Hey, quarantine. Pause, pause for the orange. Quarantine. You know, so, uh, Just so, don't name so, them uh, Corona. How about that? Or don't name, definitely don't name them Corona. Don't name them Corona. Please do not do that. It's like them folk who name their kids Jezebel. I never understand that one, but you know, have a story. So let's come back here. Some people's theology is just way off, you know. Um, parenting through the pandemic. What have you experienced as number one, the top three challenges? And number two, what has been your solution to those challenges, parenting those children? Well, from my perspective, um, the first big challenge has been my kids actually receiving that this is an actual, actual real crisis that we're in. I don't know yeah. if it's a generational thing or what, but these kids are very desensitized to crisis because they have so much exposure to things. They've seen people blow up on TV and all that. When we were coming up, we didn't really have that much um, sensationalization in what we watch. And so yeah. they are very numb to it. And so we've had to really sit down with them and make it clear to them how serious this actually is, how you have yeah. to actually follow the protocols. They haven't really understood that. So that has been a major, major problem. And because we have kids of different ages, we have high schoolers and we have elementary schoolers, just right. be very cautious about how real we are. We want to be yeah. real. We want to be honest, but we also want them to have hope and not go to sleep with with nightmares you know yeah um, yes yes yeah. and then i i think the third issue would just be the fact that we're we're dealing with this all at one time in one place and and you know just not knowing where their emotions lie with it i think each kid is dealing with it. in our house each yeah. child is dealing with it their own way completely different too and so for us it's just been slowing down and kind of meeting each child where they are having those moments and discussions with them one-on-one -on -one to just see exactly how it's affecting them and how we can help and how we can use the word to help. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Love that. Love yeah. that. So in using the word to help, how is that? How have you applied that? Give us a, give us a pra practicalize it. Give us a uh, anecdotal example of how the word has helped and what you've done. So for instance, we talk to our kids about world events. We've talked to them about how, <clears throat> there are all types of things happening all around the world. Like this is a pandemic, right? So this is a crisis that we're in, but there are examples in scripture where they've gone through similar experiences. So we talk about Joseph mm -hmm. and how they went through a famine and how they had to store up for many years so that when the famine came, they were prepared and ready. So we're talking yeah. about the difference between uh, people being caught up in panic versus preparation. We are preparing because we don't know if it's going to be two weeks, two months, or however long versus other people who are panicking. Yeah. And so yeah. we're able to make the scripture more real because we're able to now connect yeah. the dots from historical yeah. biblical stories to real life current day True. situations. Yeah, I think the Bible has become more relevant as a result of it, which has been a real blessing because especially the high schoolers who we've kind of lost to the world in some regard and we're always having to pull them back every time they come in the house we're having to we're able to actually show them see this is this is what really happens and kind of drawing them into the word and now we're seeing them with a new interest in the bible yeah. it becomes relevant to them now they they really haven't had a reason for the bible to be as relevant as it is right now before this so that has been a real blessing honestly Mm -hmm. Tell us some more about the pr other pressures that you've um, either with your own kids or with some of the other couples that you uh, provide the ER service to yeah. uh, that, pe that people have encountered during this season. I think one of the biggest pressures that you'll hear, yeah. you're talking to people or even watching news reports, I'm not a teacher. I, like, mm. I don't remember ah. their math is different. 
their science is different and here yeah. i am trying to help and i'm making situations worse because yeah. i don't yeah. even understand Ca causing the same exactly. problem oh my goodness and now you're dealing with as in our situation we have two in high school two in elementary yeah. so now yeah. we have to be competent on different grade levels and they each yeah, require yeah. their own level of attention you have some parents right. who have children who have learning disabilities who require a little bit more support and help so it's it's a big strain on parents and how they show up for their for their children in regards to their education I, i've had wives reaching out to me just literally like i said wanting to run away from home um someone reached out to me this morning on marco polo and basically said they tried to auction their child off in a group today uh, i like uh, their uh, child <laughs> so there is definitely <laughs> some frustration going on just you know do we even like our children that's what we're trying to figure out right now so everybody's going through something but we're working it out because even in that conversation she said you know what but at the end of the day we're spending more time together we're talking yeah. I'm learning my child like I never learned my child before I didn't know that they thought this way or had these opinions you know so yeah. there is a beautiful thing happening where families are actually coming together and reconnecting that we are actually able to get a grip, a better grip on our children, especially the high school kids. And if you have high school students or that age uh, children, you understand that they begin to shape their own ideas and opinions out there in the world. And so now you have your hands or it's like you have a new grip on them because they're coming yeah. to you because of all this uncertainty. And so it's yeah. a huge opportunity to share the word with them and, and invite them to renew their relationship with Christ. Exactly. Yeah. I, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were saying that one of the things we've got to be careful of as parents, and I don't know if anybody online, remember, please share this, make sure you're sharing it. I know I keep saying it, but it's because I'm quite feeling a little guilty about the uh, whole platform issue that happened earlier. But uh, everybody share it. If this is blessing you, by the way, just hit some likes, hit some likes and get your questions ready. We're going to come to the questions in a minute. But uh, the person was saying to me that this is, they're, uh, they're a professional in terms of working in schools with making kids aware of how to manage themselves online and being careful online. And there are predators out there mm. who know that kids are going to be spending more time online now. And so I think we as parents need to be even more observant of what our kids are watching and what they're engaging in in terms of um, their communication online. And also this is a time as well where we've got to be careful of online bullying, because the kids are going to be, you know, they're going to be on these phones and um, and on their computers and laptops and iPads and whatever else. And so we just got to be extra cautious as well in that context. Um, all right. So, so tell us, tell us one just while we're on this parenting through the pandemic, give us just quickly your top three. Give us top three quick bullets, bullets, bullets as to what you think people can do to engage their kids. You talked about the word of God. You talked about talking to them and explaining to them about what's going on in the right context. Give us your top three that you think people can activate right now. Two things real off the top. I think you should okay. have no or non-technology times. It should be right blocks in the day where they don't have their yes. phone. They don't have a tablet. They don't have the computer. They don't even have TV. Yeah. What we've that's learned gonna world, that's going to be World War Three. It's that's been a battle. Be, <laughs> it has. Battle. It has. For some people, for some people, not in but, my house. In my house, we we've trained her. But I, I'm not saying we got the perfect situation, but. She's a good girl. We've trained her really well to understand there are times when we're just going to lock off and it's going to be us, you know. So go ahead. Yeah, like I think the more technology and access they have to media, the, they, they're bored all the time. When we removed it, they realize, wow, we have a backyard. There's things we can play with. Wow, there are games, there are toys. How about we can talk to each other? We are sisters. We have a yeah. relationship. And so we realize that when technology is removed, they get closer, they, they get more, more creative, creative absolutely. more imaginative, and it helps their brain stimulate a, a lot better. And another thing I think is important, you have to have daily meetings. So literally, you yeah. mentioned how you have Zoom calls and trainings and you're meeting with your team and different people around the world because of all the information that's coming out. Well, you should have daily meetings with your children explaining what's happening. Because if they're on their technology, they're looking at the same reports that you may be looking at and interpreting it in their own way. Right. And so there's got to be a game right. plan. There's got to be conversation. There's got to be uh, implementation based upon conversations that you have daily. Yeah. There's a few things that we've been focusing on. We call it the Love. X. We've been talking about family. <laughs> we've been talking about the importance hold of... On, hold on, hold on. You call the what? Family. Go back to family. The, the, the Fs. Fs, right? Five or okay. six Fs. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Family, <clears throat> right? Developing our faith. 
Okay. Right. Lear learning how to have more fun. So we're, we're talking about playing games and putting puzzles together right. outside in the backyard, right. having fun, yeah. the, the importance yeah. of fitness, right? Because yeah. the best way to combat the coronavirus is to make sure that we're in our best health. So Danielle yes. has turned into a scientist, a doctor, <laughs> a, a natural a gym teacher. Yeah, everything. Yeah. So, so the, a naturopathic. A naturopathic. <laughs> Listen, cookies, candy, ice cream, cake. What that does is it, it brings down your immune system. It makes yeah. you susceptible to everything that's happening in the world. So we're talking about building up your immune system by eating the right foods and taking the right supplements, all those type of things. Then another F is future. Now, this is important. This will come to an end. But what will life be like when it does come to an end? Are we right. going to go back to business as usual? Are we going to go back to our normal ways and tendencies that got us caught up in this situation where we're at each other's throat in the first place? Or are we going yeah. to create our own new norm? See, when crisis yeah. happens, we know that governments around the world are rewriting all the rules. That's right. Yeah. Why can't yeah. we do that as a family and be intentional? Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Why can't right. we be intentional? So, so these are the things that we're talking about to make sure that we're moving forward beyond this situation. Love it. We, um, I, I think it's brilliant. Love all what you're saying. We are uh, at our house here. What we're doing is while we're working, while I'm working, and I, I, uh, we over here now, we've got a rule that the prime minister's introduced that we can go out for exercise and uh, emergency things only in general. But exercise is one thing. So my lunchtime, I'll take a break. Uh, my daughter will take a break from her schoolwork. Today we did it actually. And we went out and we went on a journey of discovery. We went and looked at stuff. St I, in fact, I noticed things I had seen before. I'm talking to people who I've never spoken to before in my own neighborhood. And it's just interesting how this enemy, this, this common enemy is actually causing people to have communication. Um, but also going back to the, the other F you mentioned, I think this is an obvious thing, but so, so important is the fun factor. The fun factor is vital. And so guys, I'm going to be real with you. I've been doing TikToks. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. He learned I mean, TikTok too. Yeah. <laughs> We've been trying to look at some TikTok dances and just, you know, I'm ready. I told her I'm ready. Whenever you're ready, we may do a switch thing. There's this switch thing they're doing. Uh, so it's just fun. I think we've got to find the fun in ourselves as yeah. well yeah. and make sure that they, they don't become too old too soon yeah. because of this dream. Yeah. You know, we usually use that terminology in terms of our kids being forward in a negative way, but also I'm talking about just becoming just, they lose their childhood. I think we've got to find our childhood in ourselves and bring <coughs> it out with, they maintain their fun. Even if it's a, you know, I don't know. That's no, that looks like Madonna. That was Madonna Vogue, right? That was the yeah. guys. I'm, yeah. I'm trying. I'm a TikTok here. Okay. The pastor's trying everything. I'm trying <laughs> to help people. Trying to help my family. <laughs> So, um, so I think the fun factor is vital for the, for the survival of our kids' youth. I yeah. think that's what's critical. All right, guys, if you've got any questions, if you're liking this, hit some likes, share, 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 and uh, paste your questions in the comments, and we'll come and we'll answer. If you, if you put as much as 10 questions, we'll get Daniel and Asani to answer those questions. Now, don't write Psalms 119 now. We don't want epistles. We've got, we've got enough of those in the Bible. We just want just summarize questions, guys. If you've got any questions, then please write them down ASAP. Paste them in the comments, and we'll come and answer any questions that you've got to say or got to uh, uh, propose or put forward, so that Daniel and Hassani can answer them. So please get your questions ready. Uh, what's the fun? What's the most fun thing you've done so far with the kids? By the way, guys, what's 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 been happening? I think under that period, pandemic. Up. A discovery walk. We yeah. went and right. I didn't even know we had a big cow farm like right literally next behind to our house. And so we went wow. up, we saw all these cows and we just, the kids enjoyed something so simple with no technology. We went up, walked yeah. over there and we just stared at the cows. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, was simple. fun. Simple. And, and, and um, honestly, we weren't sure if we could do much more because there's really nowhere to go. We, there's nothing yeah. open. You Listen, I, we've been with Gabriella and I today. We were discovering flowers. We didn't even know. Then, then you can go onto apps and find out the names of them. 
we just tried to utilize that time as, as best as we could. Then we started timing ourselves for running. She said, now this is what blew me away. I, I shouldn't even, I shouldn't even publicize my business like this. I'm going to lose my call. Everybody's going to laugh at me and take them. Gabriella said to me, dad, we were doing a sprint. And she said, dad, I didn't know you could run. I've never seen you run like this before. <laughs> Because she doesn't come to the gym with me. I run at the gym. I'm just going to run just randomly, you know. But because of this, we're having to race each other and stuff and just find the fun. So I'm literally exhausted right now. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> so one of the questions we've got here, as we see, is um, what's the best way to keep your cool with your children, especially while homeschooling? What tips mm. have you found? Mm, man. It's easy to get frustrated. I found that um, tip. So yeah. I, I, touche on that comment. <laughs> wow. Um, I, listen, it's getting better every well, day. It is. We have to take breaks. Like we switch off. Like when yeah. she reached her limit, we switch off. I take control. Yeah. When, when I'm getting like overwhelmed, she switches. She takes control because you need right. a, an opportunity to just breathe yeah. and de-stress and show up as your best self. Because if I'm not my best self, I can't be a good dad. I can't be a good husband. Yeah. I'm not a good Hassani. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Taking the time to do that is important. And, and, and right. just keeping everything in context, like, okay, this is not going to last forever. We're going to get through this. I need to stay strong. Like, sometimes you have to self-talk to get yourself through a situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've, I, I think that, that that's beautiful. And that's great when you're a couple. But also, you've got single parents yeah. who are trying to homeschool and managing their own kids. And what I, what I would advise people to do as well, I mean, nobody's got this completely worked out. Number one, do not beat yourself up as a parent. Do not beat yourself up or feel like a failure. Everybody is struggling right now to try and manage. All of us are going to be campaigning after this for teachers to get the pay rise yeah. as well. <laughs> because we're, we're, real, we're realizing this is a $1 million or pound job, okay? Yeah. Uh, but one of the things you've got to do, uh, here's, what, here's a tip for me, is let your child teach you first. Mm. So sit down with the child. The ch your child has to feel like they're achieving as well. So let them teach you some of the things they've done before and explain to you how they did it and just interact with them on that. Because one of the goals here is to keep the child's brain active and keep the child's self-esteem high so they don't feel like they're failing at their classes as well. So sit down and say, okay, show me what you did last. What was the last great maths equation or last? Ask great science project you did and tell me how you did it. Tell me. So use that time so that they feel that they're winning. There's got to be a balance. Uh, if you're struggling with the new work, uh, balance that with them feeling the success of the fact that they're remembering the achievement with previous work. So that's very important so that their self-esteem stays high, so that you stay uh, cool, <laughs> and so that also um, uh, they can also make sure that their brain is staying active by remembering equations or science projects or whatever else they've done before. If that's some wisdom, I want you to hit some likes if that's helping anybody. I think these are some key things that we probably need to do to make sure we're trying to be a blessing in our kids' lives. We've got another question here. What if a family are struggling with children with special needs and rely on, um, rely on the schools to accommodate the child, uh, schools to accommodate the child in the day? How does a parent manage the emotion of not having that help right now. Okay, so so what if a family, you can see, I don't know if you guys can read this as well, Daniel and Asani. What if a family are struggling with children with special needs and rely on the schools to accommodate the child in the day? How does a parent manage the emotion of not having that help right now? Yeah, well, it's kind of what I mentioned before, how it takes a community. Yeah. And yeah. because a lot of parents are feeling like they're left on their own to just figure everything out. And this is yeah. a new world for them, not only dealing with their child all day long who has special needs from an educational perspective, but not even understanding the curriculum. Well, there are yeah. online communities, there are forums, there, 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 a lot of Zoom calls are happening all over the country now where people who have shared experiences of having special needs children are getting on and being connected and kind of working through yeah. and talking through how to manage on a day-to-day -day basis. And so the yeah. parent needs support as the parent supports the child. So you have yeah. to rely on wisdom that's greater than your own to get through this. And so we found yeah. that our technology allows them to do that. Excellent. Bernadine, I see Bernadine, she's one of our ministers at, the church, at our church, and she's a teacher. She's a school teacher as well. And she said something, which I think something that's so obvious, it's so simplistic, but yet so, so 
important. Uh, she said, give your kids <coughs> rewards for work to encourage them as well. Reward them. I, I mean, there's, sometimes you can't reward them with, by taking them out. You can't reward them by taking them to McDonald's. Over here, I don't know, by the way, over there is McDonald's closed. Over here, McDonald's closed at 7 p.m. I think it was last night or night before. And I have never seen so many people trying to get their last Happy Meal before the sad quarantine. It was hilarious, but that's another story. But I think the rewards of the kids, you could reward them with extra time on their phone to talk yeah. to their kids, to uh, talk to their friends, I should say. Uh, but I think rewards, that's a great point there that you've made. And I think that's, um, that's worth everybody noting. Uh, well, what other questions have we got uh, that are coming up? We have got um, any other questions? Can you guys see any other questions yeah, on here? I'm trying. There's another one. It says, "What if one of you, as a key worker, had to go to work, and you have children, and go out, then come in tired to your family who needs you too? How do you manage this?" And I think we talked about that before. Um, you really just need to sit down with your partner or your spouse and say, listen, we got to come up with something. How can we split the responsibilities? I am beat. You know, we are not able to just order out anymore, right? We can't just go order food and just take that weight off. So how can we yeah. partner to take the load off? Yeah. It's really just communicating. It's communicating with each other, but it's also having these sobering conversations with your children. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, our children, right, so this, this all popped off. There's three birthdays in our household in one month, yeah. right? My two youngest, two days apart, had a birthday. Yeah. We have another one who has a birthday in a couple Sweet weeks. 16. And we had to let them know, like, listen, during this season, things are just different. It's a, yeah. it's a the resetting of their mindset and their yeah. emotions and expectations. And you yeah. have to let them know, listen, this is just for a period of time. I don't know how long it's going to last, but it will come yeah. to an end. Things will shift and change. But in the meantime, I need you to be strong. I need you to be positive. I need, I need, you, I need you to adjust. Being yeah. highly adaptable in this situation is so critically important in order to make it through. And guess what? Yeah. We can have this conversation once a week, but sometimes yeah. it requires you having a daily conversation with your children reminding yeah. them and it goes back to yeah. those morning meetings that we have with our kids we just had one this morning we took it yeah. there was an hour presentation that a doctor gave unpacking corona i said let's just watch 10 minutes of it and then let's have a conversation and so yeah. just just talking to them on a daily basis casting yeah. the vision on a daily basis yeah will help to keep them intact and help you get you through this So situation. they can help out as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We've assigned our kids tasks and I mean, they have their chores to do. So that also would help take some of the load off of that, you know, person that's overworked. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things we've got to do also with our kids, because I'm really concerned, my biggest concern during this Corona issue is not just the virus. My biggest concern is self-esteem, fear, all of these things are connected to one word, which is mental health, including the mental health of our children. And so I think one of the things I've been advising people myself to do is to use, be careful with their language with their kids. For instance, in our home, uh, this month should have been my daughter's first teenage birthday. She's officially becoming a teenager. I've, I've taken gun lessons and everything, so I'm good. But she's officially become a teenager and um, with becoming a teenager, we were going to have a party for our celebration. And I, one of the things we've been very conscious of to maintain a hope and not deflate our kids is to use correct language. So rather than saying, right, the party's cancelled, uh, the celebration's cancelled, word, that word cancel is very final. So just talk about postponed. We're going to put it off and then get a date in the calendar, a realistic date, uh, quite you know, a little further away, you can say, we're going to do something on this day. Don't worry. We're just putting it off for now, but it's going to be great. We're going to have a great time. It's going to be fantastic. And then if this thing ends earlier, you could just say, look, we've decided we're going to bring it closer. Does that make sense? Yeah. But not, ha the, not having the language of finality. Finality is not going to be inspirational and it's going to affect their self-esteem and leave and affect their youth. And one of the things our kids have got to learn to enjoy is their youth. Okay. All right. Is there any other questions? We'll take one more question and then we'll shut it down for tonight. Uh, this has been great tonight. Um, who else? Have we got? Can you see any other questions, guys? There's a question uh, by Natalie Lynch. It says, do you think it's okay to be your children's friend while being a single parent or having both parents involved? And do you think that being their friend would be better implemented in terms of laying down specific rules? Um, I, I think there has to be a balance, you know, 
I often have to remind our kids occasionally, I'm not your friend, mm -hmm. right? Don't talk to me or come to me as casual as you would your friends. There should be right. a respect that you have for us as your parents. Right. However, right. it's important that we be friendly and be playful and jovial yeah. with our kids. But there's got to be a level of respect that they have for us. So in essence, you do have to look up, not look across. Because yeah. positionally, we're your parents and we're here to lead you, guide you, steer you and everything else. But yes, yeah. we need to be friendly yeah. because yeah. that's the world. And I think it yeah. also depends on, you know, what season you are in, in the lives yeah. of your children, right? I mean, when you're an adult, it is more of a, you know, friendly relationship. But if you are leading and guiding and raising children, there definitely needs to be a hierarchy. We, we're not friends. I am guiding you. I am grooming you. And so that's really the position I would take. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, um, uh, I, my team have just told me there's a whole load of other questions coming in from a plethora of watch parties and things that are taking place with this uh, live as well. So they're going to they're going to send me one or two more. I think I'm going to give them I'm going to give you guys team. I'm going to give you 60 seconds to post them in. Uh, we've been going a long time here tonight already. I wanted to give people. It's not like everybody's got anything to do. So I guess I guess, <laughs> so I guess we could. Um, we can play with a little another five minutes or 10 minutes right here. If this has been a blessing to you guys, uh, those of you watching and you're glad we did this, I didn't want to just do another live where I'm just another pastor just talking. You get enough of me doing that. I wanted to bring you wisdom that would help you navigate through these times. And all of us are going through, you'll find the same kind of pressure. So do not feel alone. Do not beat yourself up in terms of feeling deflated that you're not a successful parent or you're not being the right wife or the right husband. Let's all understand that we've got ways we can improve, but we are all navigating a difficult state, a difficult situation. So uh, uh, are there, where have you posted them, guys? Have you put them in the, group, in, the, in the comments? Let's have a look in the comments. Is there any other questions that have appeared in the comments? Can you see any other questions, guys? that have appeared in the comments, Daniel and Asani. While, while uh, Daniel is looking at these questions, let me just say this. There are people all around yeah. the world that are watching right now, uh, those in London, those in the States, and all around the world. And many of you are struggling. You're couples in crisis. You're dealing with a lot of pressures, and you don't have help. You don't have a lifeline. We highly yeah. recommend go to couplesacademy.org. You know, there's yeah. nothing wrong with having a session with people who can guide you through what it is that you're going through. You don't Absolutely. have to live in your crisis. You don't have to live in the pit of your pain. There is an answer. There's a solution. So go to couplesacademy.org. Let us set up a discovery call with you and get you on the path to fulfillment. Absolutely. Leon, bless you. I see you saying thank you, Pastor Mike. Uh, God bless you guys. Thank you for for sending us your positive comments is greatly appreciated as I'm reading them here. Uh, one question's come in as well, asking what if a couple is unsure if one of them has the virus Just as me. they show slight symptoms, how can they be intimate with each other? Uh, you will answer that. Go ahead. I mean, I, I mean, they well, need to be tested. They need to be tested, number one. Okay. But, but the other part is that if there's somebody under your roof that is infected, likely it's very likely that you are as well according to what the news is saying, right? Because we have to have a six foot distance, right? So you may be carrying and may be infected. I don't know if it's the type of virus that compounds. We're not medical, you know, we're not medical professionals, but I would just think that person needs to get tested. You know, yeah. of course, Hassani has a cough. Well, I just had him go and talk to the doctor to have himself tested because I was about to quarantine him <laughs> out the house. <laughs> <laughs> so not everybody who's sick, guys, has the virus, okay? People have yeah. regular colds as well. So, you know, you got to do what you can wherever you are to see if you can get tested. It's not easy everywhere. I don't know how, it, how it's getting handled in yeah. London. But there are situations yeah. where uh, there are couples and one does have the virus. Mm -hmm. And so they are self-isolating themselves in the home. So, for instance, there's a bedroom that he has mm -hmm. gone to for that 10, 14-day period and stays in that space and there's one member of the family oh, who wow. serves that person while all the other children or family members are protected. And so right. he got very sick. He had the flu. He's doing much better now. He's gotten past it. He's taken his medications. And then he was reintroduced back into the normal space within his house. Oh, so if you right. have symptoms or if you're feeling some type of way, get tested. And in the meantime, self-quarantine and self-isolate yourself in a certain part of the house. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, guys, we're going to give another 60 seconds for any questions to appear. If no other questions appear, then we're going to let it go tonight. 
We've tried to be as big a blessing as possible. Guys, I'm trying my best to pass to you. Those of you who are members of the Tab Church London, I love you. I miss you. Uh, I miss our gatherings physically, our, our face-to-face gatherings, as it were. And uh, we can't wait for those to kick back off. Our first gathering after this, I'm sure, is going to be a phenomenal blessing. Uh, but these Facebook Lives uh, on Wisdom Wednesday nights, we're going to be trying to keep on and bringing topics that bring practical practical blessings into um into the lives of people and to help bring wisdom and inspiration transformation and hopefully elevation to your lives by the end of this like i said at the beginning of this live i found out having spoken to people because as a pastor you deal with people every day that some couples are discovering that they've been living in a long distance relationship with the person they live in live with a long distance relationship with the person they live with and this is a time for actually to make that an opportunity for fresh discovery fresh conversation it's bringing us back to basics because there is no exit now you can't just walk out the house and rock up to your friend's house and complain about your wife you've got to be mature and face up to having conversation right now uh one question came in uh where is that one gone now uh here we go uh any tips on managing toddlers at home? Uh, young, I guess, young kids. There's one there. You guys can answer that question. Go ahead. I mean, you know, I think it's pretty much putting the same principles in place, really, right? Trying your best to make a space for you to just get your head clear. It's all about scheduling with kids, right? So if you have toddlers, they've got their nap times. I remember when I had toddlers, one of the hardest things for me to do was sit the heck down and relax when my kids were napping. You're always, yeah. you got to get up and do a whole bunch of things. Well, when they're napping, take your time to nap. Take yeah. your time to get some peace and get a clear head. This is yeah. really the best you can do right now. And, and also, yeah. as we've heard before, cleanliness is next to godliness. This is more of a time to be clean. You know, kids, toddlers have a tendency of just grabbing things, putting things in their mouth. And so you have to be very cautious and overprotective about their, their cleanliness, their yes. sanity. Just, just making yes. sure that the sanitation, everything is right and exact. We watched the video today and it talked about how the virus can actually carry and transfer from person to person. And we were like, really? We, 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 didn't, we had no clue that there were so many different ways. So being more protective over your children during this time, I think, is critically important. Great. Love you guys. Well, we've heard tonight so many things. We've heard about the fact that we need to make an effort for each other uh, in terms of our appearance, our, our attractiveness. Even though you're both in the house, don't just stay in the same old clothes that you went to bed in and get up and just lounge around that you need to need to serve each other respect each other in that context make an effort for each other we heard from what i remember talk about keeping certain zones that's your zone that's my zone not that it's a territory but it's a space that you both can go to and do your thing and then come back to a unified zone where you're able to kind of have uh, marriage connections and intimacy uh, we talked about intimacy before sexuality and all kinds of things that you've heard tonight, guys. And I hope what Daniel and Asanya brought has been wise. I tried to throw just a couple of things in. I really wanted them to talk tonight. Not so much just for you to hear from Pastor yet again. Um, but we're hoping that you guys are surviving. You can make it through this madness. Your marriage can make it through this madness. You can parent through this pandemic. And one of the critical things I want you to do is to be uh, interactive with each other, guys. So couples... Get on the phone. Do FaceTime calls with other couples. Compare notes as to what you're going through. Uh, if you're a single parent, find another single parent uh, and get on the phone with them. Compare notes. Talk about what you're going through. Let your kids talk to each other. We've got to utilize the technology to interact so that no one will have no one. I'm going to say that again, so that no one will have no one. Everybody needs somebody. We love you guys. I'm trying. I'm praying for you. Pastors praying for you. I'm praying for you. Uh, I wanna. I wish I could reach out, hug you all. You know, I'm a hugger. Those of you at the Tab Church, you know, um, uh, that's how we roll. There, we high five. We we tell your neighbor. We push your neighbor. We do everything. But um, I miss you guys, and I pray that God protects you, guides you, and we're going to bring more wisdom over the next. Uh, few weeks by the grace of god on wisdom wednesdays but remember friday morning 6 30 a.m there's going to be the power prayer call the power prayer call i want you to keep the power of prayer in your homes they're telling us that more bibles than ever before are selling out in certain stores people are having a spiritual awakening because there's something about when you come face to face with mortality you really realize you need to understand your spirituality 
And so people are waking up to this. So let's encourage people. Let's speak hope. Let's speak positivity to each other. Let's have faith over fear. And let's walk forward together because we walk by faith and not just by what we see, guys. So let's push forward. Love you, Daniel and Asani. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Have a great, great rest of your day. I know you guys are several hours behind us and uh, we're going forward now. I'm going to go now catch up on my evening dose of the news. We're trying not to obsess over it, but to catch up on what's going on. And we're going to tune out. Love you. God bless you guys. And we'll Love talk you. again real soon. By God's Bye. Grace. Bye. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Love you, everybody. God bless you. All right. So it's over. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty good. You, you, you make it so man, make it so easy. You yeah. one, <laughs> man, you're one of the best interviewers on the planet. And because it's conversational, you drop your nuggets, your wisdom. It's just an amazing experience every time we do. We're trying, bro. We're trying just to be a trust to help people first. Oh, we don't want anybody to murder each other. You know, we don't want we don't want any crazy job going on. Is there a way you can sh can you uh, make it public the live, or do I have to do that? It's already the live. Public. That it's public. It's already public. No, I mean, you I mean, can like, share it to all your groups. They can just okay. share it out to all your groups. Okay, great, great, fantastic, fantastic. I appreciate. It. We may need to do this again, guys. We don't know how long we're going to be rocking for. Anything. This is this is intense. This it is, is the intense. highlight of our day. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I'm glad. I'm glad because I tell you what. Um, I went out today just to go and look at the developments on our new building because they're still allowing construction to carry on for now. But there's conversations happening with the government saying that they think. The problem is, is that the uh, public transportation systems in the morning are jam-packed with construction workers mm -hmm. because what they've, they've reduced the public transportation, which means there's less seats, less room on trains, tubes, buses. And so now the place is, is people are pressed up against each other and it's mainly construction workers trying to get to work. And so they're thinking they may need to shut down construction as well because how else are these guys going to get to work? So I just went down there to see what the developments were and what were just going out. The place just feels so strange, man. You know, you've been to London enough. You know how London is. London is just weird right now. So, um, yeah. you know, trying to make it through, guys, trying to make it. I just want to make sure I don't come out too fat I, I, because that, you know, I'm eating like a pregnant woman. And I need to I behave myself. That is a, the snacking, the snacking is a problem. We got to figure it out. Major right? Issue. We bought all this pasta and rice and we're eating it. And, and, and then when we go into the store, we're just buying like, yeah, let's have that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to have a toilet to No form of restraint. We're just grabbing all the dessert. We were the toilet. We had the toilet paper issue, but but Donna Maria, that girl, she went like a like an assassin, and she stopped us. We got enough to last us through the end of the year. We should be selling to it. I've got shares and dividends in toilet paper right now. <laughs> it's just great. Like you can't find toilet tissue anywhere, anywhere over there, nowhere. Mm -hmm. Wow! Somebody bought twelve years worth of toilet tissue. Off of Amazon.com. They should be arrested. They should have their toilet paper seized. And, and now people are selling rolls of toilet tissue for $25. And people are buying the it. The government is shutting that down. They are shutting it down. That's ridiculous. That's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. Same crazy. thing with hand sanitizer. Somebody bought up like thousands of jugs of sanitizer. Yeah, that's what, that's what we're, we're low on. We're very low on that over here at the moment. But you know, it's always, I tell you, I'll give you, I don't know if you guys use this, but. What, what Donna Maria's done is she's bought the one that turns the liquid through the nozzle. It turns it into foam. Uh -huh. So it lasts forever. Mm. You know? um, that's been a great tip for us. Um, but mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm, it's just strange. Like Sundays, just like last Sunday was the first Sunday we were in quarantine. And we pre-recorded this. Uh, for the first time, I was at home drinking coffee, watching the service. And we broadcasted it like it was live. So people could still comment and like and stuff. So everybody, everybody thought it was live. And I'm there watching the comments. It was such an interesting experience to have that happen on that day. And then I was able to spend the rest of the day with Gabriella, which was a great day. We went to a, a, a place we wanted to go for ages, a place that's, we're, we're obsessed with eggs. So it's a place that sells specialist egg burgers and stuff. So we went up there, had a good time. But it's just strange reorientating yourself, you know, into mm -hmm. a, a new routine, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that was one of the questions we had, like, once everything's over. So yeah. officially, you can now go back out. Will there be yeah. an issue with people reorienting themselves to go back to church 
the way they were prior to this pandemic. Because now, you know what? Being home, watching on a computer, this is comfortable. I don't have to get up. I don't have to fight through traffic. Have you guys thought about what impact it'll have once this is over? Everything changes from here. Everything changes. However, what I know will happen because of human nature, human nature, human beings are the only creature on planet Earth that are absolutely interdependent. If a, if a whale is born, if a baby whale or shark is born, that, that thing can swim as soon as it comes out of its mother's womb. A human being needs community to survive. By virtue of that, community is in our being. It's in our being. That's why God said it's not good for Adam, for the man to be alone. Um, um, and I think what's going to happen is once this is all over, the natural desire to be together is going to make the first two to three services jam freaking packed like a like a easter watch night new year's eve to, you know in black church watch night kind of but just jam packed spillage and people will um because they want to be together they'll there's going to be a craving for it online what because they, they'd have been overdosed on online now we want to get together but whether that wears off and people then become lazy and then go back to their own old routines when they go back to see their side chicks and when they go back to, I don't know, being able to buy the weed and the drugs from the dude on the corner because they can't do that right now because they might catch corona. You know, it, it, once they go back into their routine, then I think we, we by nature, will lull. But the first couple of services, at least, I think are going to be jam packed because human nature wants to get in community. Gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. It did does. you watch that documentary, by the way? I did. I did. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. It was like 20 minutes. I was wa doing the kitchen while yeah. I was watching it. Cool. And uh, yeah, man, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Because it was made in 2019 and how accurate it is describing what we're experiencing now. Oh, I yes. need to see it. I need to see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. A, that's a, and, and it will make you think twice the next time you go to your Chinese restaurant. You're going to be wondering what the heck of the kind of meat they're putting in that. Because in China, you remember this thing has all evolved from the wet markets in China, which is where they serve bat and snake and frog and rat and rodent. You know, it's just crazy, man. Crazy. Well, guys, love you. Appreciate you. And um, I'm going to let you guys chill out and enjoy the rest of your day. Moving. I, I guess what you got planned for the rest of the day is going from the living room to the family room to the kitchen. That's your plan, right? <laughs> we have we have three more sessions. Oh wow! Uh, oh, we have another we webinar. Have, we have three more webinars. So wow, yeah, wow. it's gonna be a long night. Do it, man. Do it, man. Love you. Appreciate. It. Let's talk soon. Let's catch up real soon. Yeah, definitely. Tell uh, Don Marie we said. Yes, please. And uh, well, let's I'm gonna go find out, I'm gonna go find out how much of that wine she drank right now. I'm gonna find out. <laughs> and that lobster. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Bless you. Bye. 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 Bye.